Remember the French Revolution? Liberty, equality, fraternity. Those were the big ideas. And one result was a law making education mandatory for everyone starting at age six. Sounds great, right? Equal opportunity for all. But then, surprise! Schools discovered not all kids learn the same. Some were high achievers, some just average, and some struggled to keep up. So the big question became, should all these kids be learning together? Or should we separate them based on how smart they are? Top students in one class, middle in another, and the rest maybe playing outside? But how do you even define smart? That's where things got tricky. Say hello to Alfred Binet, a French scientist who created the first ever IQ test. The first IQ test was basically a bunch of math, guessing, and memory questions. Now, the guy who made it, Alfred, wasn't a fan of labeling people based on scores. He thought intelligence was more than just numbers. Then comes Louis Terman, an American obsessed with intelligence. He took Alfred's test to another level. In 1921, Louis Terman launched his famous study, tracking 1,500 super smart California kids. He wanted to prove intelligence wasn't just a score, but a destiny. His dream, identify the top 25% of smartest people, making them experts in everything. Then, from that group, choose the top 5%, the ultimate leaders and presidents of the future. But wait, it gets worse. Remember the movie Minority Report, where people are judged for future crimes? Well, Terman tried something similar, using IQ tests to predict criminality. Picture receiving a low grade on a test and winding up in jail. Crazy. That is crazy. Anyway, his ideas influenced many modern IQ tests used in schools and jobs, like the SATs in America. In fact, countries like India and Korea have a multi-billion dollar industry, just prepping students for these tests, all based on Terman's ideas. But here's the twist. Intelligence researcher James Flynn found an interesting trend. Our average IQ scores have risen by 30 points in the last 80 years. Did humanity suddenly get smarter? Well, experts, even those who believed in inherited intelligence like Terman, say no. A 30-point jump in just 80 years through genies is impossible. Flynn explains that it's not about us getting smarter, but about schools focusing on skills like calculation, analytical thinking, and pattern recognition. Guess what those sound like? Yeah, boy, IQ test skills. But wait, you mean school are teaching us IQ test skills? Like, we're not necessarily smarter, but our education simply prepares us better for IQ-style tests. Oh, really? Yeah, and this raises a crucial question. The skills measured by IQ tests, are they enough to identify truly intelligent people? Let's go back to 1917. Arthur Conan Doyle, the mind behind Sherlock Holmes, was the epitome of intelligence with an impressive IQ score of 180 points. One day, Arthur met two girls who claimed to have photographed fairies. Yeah, a photo of fairies. Well, Arthur, who possesses an IQ score of 180 points, not only does believe them, but he dedicates his book, Coming of Fairies, to proving their existence with um, electromagnetic energy. Long story short, 68 years later, the truth behind those fairy photos came out. The young girl confessed that the whole thing was a prank. She and her friend had cut out fairy images from a children's book and staged the photos. They fooled a 180 IQ score mind, the one behind the masterpiece of Sherlock Holmes. I literally have no comment. You know, I once thought pasta grew in fields, and I believed black and white movies were that way because life used to be black and white back then. But you know what? My IQ is not 180 points, and I didn't believe in fairies. Like, come on, Arthur. Anyway, let's go back to the 1880s when Thomas Edison was revolutionizing America with his direct current, DC. Think of it as a one-way street for electrons flowing in a single direction. Long came George Westinghouse with his game-changing idea, the alternating current, AC. Imagine a two-way street where electrons switched directions. This had a major advantage. AC could travel much farther distances without losing energy, making it ideal for a nationwide electricity grid. Now, Edison was not one to easily concede defeat. Despite his assistant's wise advice, he stubbornly stuck to his DC system. Edison's assistant wasn't just a random guy. He was a brilliant inventor and engineer named Nikola Tesla. Tesla, like Westinghouse, saw the potential of alternating current and began his own research on it. In fact, his vision was even more ambitious than Westinghouse's. Well, Edison took it personally. Not only did he stop funding Tesla's research, but he also engaged in a bitter smear propaganda. This included public demonstrations where animals were harmed with AC. He even influenced the use of AC in executions, aiming to associate it with in people's minds. Now, why do genius people 
sometimes act stupid. Picture this, you've aced every math test ever. Numbers are your playground. But guess what? Sometimes the answer is staring you right in the face. So simple, even a toddler could see it. But because your brain's on overdrive, looking for the most complex solution, you miss the obvious. Being an expert in one field is good, but it can make you blind to things outside your comfort zone. This narrow focus can lead you to overlook vital information outside your field of specialization. Here's the thing. When you first begin learning about something, you may initially believe that you have grasped it completely, mastering the topic. However, over time, you come to realize that your understanding is limited and you feel overwhelmed by the complexity of the subject, leading to a decline in confidence. As you continue to delve deeper and learn more, you gradually start to comprehend the intricacies and gain some confidence in your knowledge. Now, here's the most important aspect. Being a genius doesn't make you a robot, although some might be. You might think your big brain's immune to feelings. Well, that is wrong. Your feelings do have control over your mind, even if it's not logical. And this is precisely why I mentioned the story of Thomas Edison and Arthur Conan Doyle. Their actions and beliefs are primarily driven by emotions and feelings, which they then rationalize from a logical perspective. Let's focus. Thomas and Arthur leveraged their abilities to justify and articulate their emotional viewpoints. Their intelligence serves as a tool to reinforce their emotional convictions. Now, some people might pick up on a hidden message. I'm urging you to take a significant step. I traveled with you from the French Revolution to IQ tests, then to the tale of Arthur and his fairies, and finally to Thomas Edison's stubbornness. Now, I want you to pause, take a deep breath, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the like button. These actions might seem simple, but they're quite important. Gotcha. <laughs> well, well, this episode isn't about putting down intelligence. Instead, it's about opening our minds to a wider range of human potential. Intelligence is multifaceted and solely focusing on math and science abilities limits our understanding. Traditional IQ tests and educational models like schools and universities heavily emphasize these subjects, creating a narrow view of intelligence. This can have a negative impact because it undervalues other valuable skills, creativity, emotional intelligence, social skills, problem solving in non-numerical contexts, cultural understanding, and more are all crucial aspects of intelligence. It limits opportunities. People with strengths in these non-tested areas might be overlooked for academic or professional opportunities because their intelligence isn't measured by current systems. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. If success hinges on performing well in math and science, those who struggle in these areas might feel discouraged and not reach their full potential. A theory by Howard Gardner suggests eight different intelligences, including logical, mathematical, linguistic, spatial, musical, intrapersonal, interpersonal, and naturalistic intelligence. By the way, intelligence tests like IQ tests only focus on one of these eight types of intelligence. Love the content. Hit that subscribe button and smash that like icon to show some love. I would truly appreciate it and love you so much. Bye. What the fuck? Uh, I mean, bye. <laughs>